it is my great pleasure to welcome Roger back to Chelsea. Um, Professor Roger Wilson was the head of Chelsea, head of college, when we moved um, here onto this site from four sites that were across London. Uh, one very memorable phrase uh, that I remember in, in that time was, this had better be more than a Pickford's job, <laughs> which was quite interesting, which was really about that it wasn't just a move. We weren't just moving to a new site. We were really re-examining re a lot of things that we did, including, in a sense, the philosophy of who we were. And I think one of the very wonderful things that's happened since we've come to Chelsea is that that, in a sense, continues, that we, we continually, from that legacy, think about who we are and how we use this site. The other most enduring phrase that I like that Roger came up with at that time was that we should see this site as a material, that it isn't just a set of buildings, it isn't just a set of spaces, but it's something that we can work with, play with, um, create, examine, really, you know, have also a lot of fun with, and I hope that we are still doing that. Roger has uh, since moved on and is now, in a way, doing a similar thing at Glasgow School of Art, and they're very lucky to have him there, uh, looking at uh, some of the changes that they're undertaking. And another legacy, in a sense, from Roger is, in fact, some of this, some of this group, because I also remember, um, and they've both been talking about it, a conversation between uh, Pat and Roger talking about the Friends of Millbank and how, in a sense, we recognised uh, the history of this site in a particular way, but also protected that, but also enabled us to move on and uh, find our own identity here. So it's been a very interesting day so far, and I hope this is also very interesting for you. Roger. Mm. Yes. I'll, um, I'll get my own back on something shortly. Um, I, I, I affected retirement in, in 2006, um, failed to make it stick and went back to work straight afterwards. Uh, I, I changed my, my life at the time, mainly because we, we'd undertaken the, the major um, logistical and academic task of moving Chelsea's four sites to this one site um, over the previous three or four years and, and it was time for either to stay for a long time or to get out quickly and I chose the latter. Um, when I saw the, the title A History of Millbank for today I didn't know whether I was the historian or part of the history. I'd rather be part of the history because actually um, history for me is only interesting so long as it allows interesting stories to be told, but historical fact has no interest for me whatsoever um, if there's a better story to be told otherwise. So there's no historical uh, sequence or fact to this, but actually there's a sense of history to it, I hope. I'm also rather resistant to the notion of archiving, so I don't want to be kind of encapsulated by this process, but I'm happy to be, be recorded and, and, and re report on afterwards. If you want to ask me questions, they better be good. <laughs> <coughs> the, the background to the, the whole of the, the move of Chelsea was, was the requirement for change. It was a requirement to change that was born fundamentally out of, a, of an economic problem that we had four sites in West London and you can imagine what four sites in West London might cost and a small college of less than 1500 students and the economy simply didn't balance you couldn't run four sites in West London in, in the 21st century on 1500 students income you simply couldn't do it so it had to change and there's two kinds of change available Change is, is, is often quoted as being one thing, but in fact it's a scale of things. On one end of the scale of change is superficial change. Um, that what in, 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 in scientific terms is called morphalaxis. It's, it's change without, without transformation. It's change without adding to or taking away. It's a reorganisation of the intrinsic and, and, and central parts of what you have. At the other end of that scale of change is the transformational change which in scientific terms is called epimorphosis, is changed by adding to or taking away significant elements of what you have. Significant in, in either the ideology, the environment, or the economy of what you have. 
what Chelsea faced was epimorphosis, was, was transitional change, transformative change. It could no longer exist, although it, never, it was never spoken about in this sense, it could never exist in its present form as it was in, in, in perpetuity. The trouble is with education institutions, one of the, one of the problems with education institutions, I, I could go on about this for some time, one of the problems with education institutions is that they, they tend to hide the transformational under the superficial. They tend to say, we will have a, we'll have a, a review of uh, 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 operational requirements, we'll have a, we'll have a talk about our, our strategic planning approach. Well, what they mean is we need, to, we need to shed something significant from our operations. We need to change in a very significant way the way we do things and how we do it. The, the starting point for the change was, was, was one of our colleagues who walked past this site that I walked past for years on my way to the Tate. It was before it was called Tate Britain, it was called the Tate. Um, and round it were, was, were steel fences. Very high steel fences, very forbidding steel fences. And, and very large scale uh, surveillance cameras. And you'd never get a sense of what was inside it, it never advertised itself, it never revealed itself, for very good reasons, no doubt. Uh, but it was, a, it was a bit of a blight uh, in, in terms of the, the look of, of Millbank. It didn't have any character from, from that end of the site, only from the front end of the site it didn't have anything at all. And very few people bathed in that river in order to see it. So it didn't really have much to commend itself as, as, a, as a location. There's not much across there that commends itself either, but even <coughs> less looking this way. And the site as you walk round to the, to, the, to the major collection of modern art in the UK was a poor <coughs> site. So it was acquired, and I won't go through the, the press of acquisition, it was acquired as the new site for Chelsea College of Art and Design, really because it seemed to match the, the, the basic requirements of an art school, that it was about the right size, and it was next door to one of the major art collections in the country. That was a pretty good commendation. And it was central. So they're good, there were very good logistical reasons for this taking place. The problem was, I think, in a way, that the, 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 the planning of the process didn't go further than making that first judgment. It never went further than saying the actual square metre of this site is kind of approximate to the four sites we have in West London, and therefore the problem should be okay. And therefore, as I said, we phone Pickford and say Monday will be fine for us, and we all move in. Of course, that doesn't work that way at all. When I talked about transformational change, and, and non-transformational change, you also have to, to anticipate when you're moving something such as Chelsea, which is not just a matter of moving a college and its students and staff, but moving an ethos. The, you have to look at the capacity for modification of both the site and the ethos, because the site and the ethos are two different things. I remember when we had the opening events, and Sally might remember this as well, we had the opening events and, and the mayor, uh, in response to my welcome to Chelsea College of Art, came to me afterwards and said, you do realise, of course, you're welcome people to Chelsea, this is in fact Westminster. And I said, with, with, with respect, I said, out there it's Westminster, in here it's Chelsea. And there was a sense in which one was moving, one was transplanting an ethos, and that was a very careful and, and, and important thing to do. The capacity for modification of Chelsea as a college, and of this as a site, was the task that we faced. Let me give you, let me give you a very challenging analogy. I don't do visual aids terribly well, but this is a visual aid, as close as you get to visual aid. In my, in my right hand, I have a cauliflower. In my left hand, I have, I have a set of those trays you put in your fridge to make ice cubes. The cauliflower and the contents of the ice cube tray are the same volume. Therefore, they fit. And that was the basic planning assumption of the move from Chelsea to this side. The, the square meterage worked and therefore the fit was inevitable. The task of actually modifying a cauliflower without losing cauliflowerliness 
And the, the, the idea of modifying an ice cube tray without using its function was a real challenge that we faced. And that was the point. We didn't want to have cauliflower flavoured ice cubes. I should have retitled this talk that, I think. <laughs> and in a sense, you know, ahead of all the logistical tasks that we faced over that period of time, we faced, if you like, an emotional audit, an audit of, of our feelings, of our sensibilities, our history, of the way we felt about Chelsea, and of course the way that many of you feel about this site as well, it was an equally powerful emotional audit as well. We wanted to look in Chelsea at patterns of behaviour, at institutional memory, the things that people carry with them when they travel. Of good and very bad habits. Oh, no, they weren't that bad. But there were some good habits and some less good habits. Let's put it that way. There was also working and personal relationships. People had grown up together on sites, on those four sites in, in Chelsea. People actually had grown up together, become friends, become enemies sometimes, left and come back. And students regarded those sites as being particularly pertinent to their own history, their own background. And that was the real task. I say, the, the, the phone call to Pickfords was far less demanding than the task of, of auditing and of, of taking some measure of what it was we had and where it was we were going to. The where it was we were going to side of it was even more difficult in a sense because, because while we knew the history of this site and it had an important and valuable history, it wasn't a history that we actually could patch on to what we already did. It didn't fit with what we did at all. And required, if you like, a negotiation over a, a long period of time. And one person that, that we've just been talking about, an absent colleague, a, a much valued absent colleague, who did a great deal of work in terms of, in terms of the real diplomacy of this site, was Jenny Hicks, who actually maintained a kind of a, a, an open door for discussion when actually there was no formal mechanism for doing so. Um, we, we, should, we should remember her in this process. So, we had the site, we had the inevitability of the move, and I arrived, I was first shown the plans in 2002, when the then, uh, the then rector of, the, of what was then the, the Institute, the London Institute, uh, Michael, Sir Michael Bishard, um, invited me to come and see him in London, and said, I have this problem. Um, and, and he said, the problem is, I have this college to move. He said, I'm not sure. I'm, he said, we will do it. You will have to have it. He said, but I'm not sure quite how to do it. He said, I'm not sure also that the college quite knows how to do it. Or that what the college needs to do, the cauliflower needs to do to get into the ice cream tray. And he said, we need, what we need is someone. He didn't use that analogy. It wasn't that clever. Uh, but he, he, what, 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 what we had was the, 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 the problem of that kind that needed to be dealt with, and that's the problem I, I came here to, 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 to undertake. We had, at the time, a, a fair amount of uh, a, a basic level planning assumptions. We, we assumed that, A, we wouldn't turn this into a sculpture studio, which against the, the will of my, many of my colleagues. Um, we wouldn't turn it into anything else other than what it was. But we would transform other parts of the site and add into them other areas of work that we thought would be appropriate to them. Looking back, in a sense, it, it, it probably wasn't, they, all those decisions weren't the best decisions we could have made. We could have made better decisions at the time. But it, in one sense, I think that was inevitable. And, and what, we, what we decided quite early on, I, see, I keep saying we, I think it's probably me and Sally, really. Um, what we decided quite early on in the process was that we'd, we'd acknowledge the fact we would never get it right by allowing ourselves a margin of error in the process. And when we moved, we allowed ourselves a bigger and bigger margin of error, probably reflecting our nervousness about getting it right. But the margin of error had to be quite substantial in order to allow us, if you like, the right to be wrong in the future. And also the right to describe the site as a project rather than as a fixed site that we would actually move in, we would do certain things, but we would never fix them, ultimately, uh, for their final purpose. The final purpose is yet to be described. I don't think the final purpose is here yet. Uh, and some of this space, will, I, I hope, will be transformed yet again in generations to come.
the change of the, the cauliflower change, meantime, was going on apace. What we had was, were two schools within, within the college, a school of art and a school of design, which were pretty well encapsulated. They were very firmly led, had strong senses of identity, in as much as academic world has strong sense of identity. Uh, and and, and, and they, they were fixed in their notion of what they expected and what they wanted. And in, in, in a sense, the only way to, to, to make the first step of the move was to brutalise that process, was to say, actually, that's not where we're starting from. If we're going to start from anywhere, we have to stop thinking of those, those, those ghettos, those silos, those, those collections of ideologies in, in the space. We have to free that process up. Um, and, and we did. So outside of the logistical planning process, the architectural experience that we were going through, we had to transform the, the academic community of Chelsea um, in order to allow us the flexibility to adjust to the space. This wasn't reducing the cauliflower to something resembling a cube, but it was actually trimming off some of the edges of it so that the fit was a little less painful. That took about a year and a half. If you think buildings are slow, you should try transforming academic communities. That takes a lot longer. And to do it without, without blood on the carpet, um, and I can't see any, then, then, then in a sense, the, that, that, was the, that was the quest. And our, our, our departed colleague, Linda Drew, took some credit for that, should take some credit for that process, because it was a very, a very difficult and important process to go through. There was also the task of being a college within a, a, a university, or what was becoming a university of the arts. Um, because the client, in a sense, was the university, and we were the kind of advisor to the client. So we had to wrest, we had to wrest responsibility back from the, the, the London Institute or university to be to Chelsea and say, we are the client, we run this show, we manage this process through. And that also took some time in the process. Meantime, the architects were still, still dealing with with door fittings and, 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 and the rest, as architects do. Uh, and, and we were dealing with, with the problem of, of trying to acclimatise our new academic community to a new space that was also developing a pace. There was a moment when I remember lumps of metal being, or steel being loaded into, locked, locked into space and thinking, well, how wonderful engineering is that actually could do that with such precision over such a long period of time. I, you know, I would go back to my flat, which was in Pimlico at the time, thinking, isn't, isn't British engineering fantastic that we can do that? Only to be told the next day that we could over budget by, you know, a trillion pounds and we we're going to be late by six months and, and the rest of it. When I, when I cursed and swore at the same people I'd praised the previous day. And we had, we had about uh, six or eight months of, of toing and froing with, with the, the actual uh, the behaviour of putting buildings together. Meantime, we were decanting from four sites and trying to soothe the brows of all our colleagues who had been born there uh, and, and would, would live there forever, and some are probably still wandering around there, uh, and to try and get them to a, a, accommodate the prospect of, of leaving. The press of occupation was going to be a really important thing. The building would have gone up. Sally and I, with our hard hats and, 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 and endlessly climb ladders, even with my knees, climb ladders, occupied the site. We were, we were working and living here at the time. But still our colleagues were back at the various sites around, around town, and they'd still not experienced what it was like to actually be here. And we knew very well that as soon as they were here, all of the views they had hitherto will probably transform their experience of living in the space. The trouble was that the, the, the project ran late. At the time we wanted to acclimatise our friends into this site wasn't available to us. They arrived almost as the students arrived. They didn't have any time to actually adjust themselves and their ideas to the space and, or, or to make new friends. Remember, they'd been working on four different sites there were people there they hardly knew, albeit a small college. They weren't chums, they weren't friends, there was no team. The team I had was a core, a senior management team 
and, and, and people like Louise and, 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 and Sally and a few others who were actually at the centre of this and knew everything that was going on. But there were probably no more than six of us that actually knew that. The rest were, were keeping the body, of, the, the body of the college afloat at the various sites. They came and they variably, I mean, said, this is wonderful, we'll get on with it, or I can't possibly work here, as if there was an alternative. So the process of occupation was really tricky. At the same time, we were trying to ac ac accommodate the, the feelings of our neighbours, many of whom live on the, <coughs> on, the, on, the, on the impoverished properties adjacent to this site. And, and of course, the previous occupants yourselves of this, of this particular uh, extraordinary building so we were trying to conduct this in a, in, a, in a reasonably professional and sensitive way, both to our colleagues, our neighbours, our previous occupants, our history. And, and for a small college of 1,500 students, that's actually a big project, a big project. Um, other places would have fallen to their knees under this. I say, were it, for, were it not for the, for the core group of staff that I had around me at that time, it wouldn't have worked. The success of the project, in a sense, was not just the fact of getting here and, and we're all breathing a sigh of relief and thinking, thank God that went in. And, uh, <coughs> and Alan sitting back there was very much involved in the logistical as well as the ideological side of this process. I mean, there was a big logistical task as well. <coughs> the, the success of the project was not just getting through the doors, it was getting through the doors with something to spare, was, was getting through the doors of, and still saying, this is an interesting project. We can actually do something with this place. We have things to learn from this building. And we'll continue to do so. And that was, the, that, was the, that was a turning point. It raised major questions, I think, about, about the nature of, of, of art design education. And also about the purpose of Chelsea as a college. In that first year that we were here, we had something like 30,000 visitors to the site. Now, there are very few higher education institutions of this scale with that kind of footfall. And this site, because of its previous function, of course it never had that kind, of, that kind of public attention. We opened up this part of London in a way that had never been opened up. And actually presented to the Tate some of a challenge, because the Tate was a classic museum. It still is a classic museum in, in the way it's operated. You can see it. We actually tried to run an art school as a much more public, much more open and permeable organisation. And, and, and the 30,000 footfall in that first year proves that we did just that. It also had a population, unlike many other institutions in the country, uh, of, of a high number of international students. And that, that, that exchange with an international audience, an international student base, Give it a quality and an and, and idealism that I, think, I don't think many places had either. There's no, there's no way in which we got that right. There's no way in which, as a as a community, we planned systematically and we enacted uh, a plan that was that was somehow correct. What we did is we transformed the building that was never made for us into a building that was perfectly well made for us. And still is. Thank you. <laughs> Questions if you dare. Thank you very much, Roger. I really wish I could give you a really good answer to that. I mean, if I, 
I, I suspect that that kind of view of, of merging culture is not something that most people, unless you're a, a totalitarian, would actually think of doing. I mean, what we tried to do was to to create. Well, I think there's one question is about is about how deep how deep does that how deep the, the idea of culture go? I mean, is it is it just kind of working habits? Is it is it is it actually dislike of something else? Is it is it a kind of prejudicial approach to things? I mean, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of things a lot of voices I heard within Chelsea when I first did my tour around it when I took over. They were actually to do with prejudice. It wasn't to do with belief or or strong sense of culture. It was to do with prejudice. You're saying, you know, I prefer my bit, leave me alone. That's fine. Thank you very much. And there were all sorts of odd things happening in that. In that, in that so there was, there were no, there's no, there's no academic um, uh, rationale for the location across the four sites. And the four sites were populated in a way you wouldn't have done so academically. There was one site that had both the, the masters, which is an internationally recognised masters fine art course, with the pre degree on one and the same side. Bonkers. I mean, academically, educationally, it's nuts to do that. You had a real separation between areas of design that should have spoke to each other. You had a real separation with the undergraduate programmes that should have done. There's no research centre. I mean, there's all sorts of things were there to do with habits. So when you talk about culture, these weren't cultures, they were just bad habits. And also, there were poorly made decisions in the past that actually had led us into assumptions that that's the way we were formed. So I think in a way, the one thing to do was separate culture from habits. And, and that, the, the step in that was to, was to simply say, there aren't two schools, one of art and design, there's just simply a college. And we will then negotiate the territories within that college that we have. And I think you had to do a bit, you had to be a bit, a bit, a bit tough about that one. I mean, that was the first step I, I, I took as the two deans of, of, of the two colleges. Um, had to go. I mean, that, that was it. Can I just add something? Because you were saying this, of course, about yourself. But one thing that we really appreciated with Roger is that he was actually non hierarchical, although he's in the senior management team. It was made up of a very eclectic group of people, in terms of people that could do things, new things, and wanted to protect things, wanted to change them. So I think from our point of view, you gave us an incredible amount of um, responsibility and actually. Um, a way of being involved in the process that under a different head actually would not have happened. Um, interesting enough, within our organisation, it doesn't happen very often. So I, I, I want to say that because I think that that was about we, we, different people could bring something to the table in a way that wouldn't have done in a different uh, regime. Checks in the post. <laughs> Well, you, 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 make, you, make, you make a very sweeping assumption about contemporary art. I mean, you know, contemporary artists are as much scholars as, as, as traditional artists ever were. You know, there, there, are, there are as many scholars, profoundly well-read and well-researched and well-informed scholars in contemporary art. It might not look like scholarship to you, but I can assure you it is. And it would, t it would be no challenge at all to a contemporary artist to, to, to look at this, to read it, to, under, to, to look into its history and to deal with that in some way that was productive and creative as it would have been a hundred years ago. So let's not think that just because contemporary art doesn't quite conform to ideas of, 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 of traditional scholarship, that it isn't there. It is. It's, it is it's incredible. In fact, I think contemporary art is more scholastic than, than, than artists of, than, than art of, of, of the last three generations have been, actually. 
there's more research, there's more looking into, and there's more likelihood of contemporary artists looking at this and actually trying to understand and read it for what it is than would have been the case, say, like 30 or 40 years ago. May I say, Roger, that for a hundred years it worked as a Royal Army Medical College, and my view, having been here now working as an association of friends of Millbank, taking people round and integrating with the staff, I feel it is a masterpiece of integration. And I would like to ask you, sir, what quality in your career did you bring to create such a change manager with such excellence? I think I'm the last person should answer your question. I, that's, 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 kind of, that's flattering first and then question after. No, no. I'm not sure. Actually, I'm not sure. You know. I'm serious because change management is everything nowadays. And you obviously, if I may, I, don't, I haven't read your CV. Um, <coughs> you presumably come from an art world, do you? Yeah, I do, yeah. yeah. Yes, I, I actually went, I went to art school, actually, I went to art school 50 years ago, first. Well, I, I know you can't believe this if you look at me now. But I, no, I, I went to art school 50 years ago in my mother's arms. Uh, but I, I did, and and, and I, I, I've been. I went to. I once went to a talk which was was about life after art school, and I decided not to leave. I thought the best thing was don't go, don't get out, stay where you are because it's a much better insight. And I've stayed ever since. So in a way, everything I've learned has been through art, and art actually. As one of those, as one of those educational processes that teaches you a number of things. One is observation. You look at what's around you really carefully, and you take note of it, and you look very, very carefully. You also are tolerant. So tolerance is terribly important. You, you don't dismiss or make assumptions about things. You look carefully, and you 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 reflect carefully too. And I think those two things, in a sense, are, are really quite useful uh, in terms of. In terms of looking at what could be changed or whatever. The rest is just is, is, is pure bloody mindedness, really, and, and, and ambition, ambition for art. I, I, wanted, I wanted to stand in front of, of the best place in the world at the best time, and, and one still does, you know, that's still the, the ambition I have. Are there any more? Stephen? Well, it wasn't a question. It was really just just to say that Roger was a very special person here because he had experienced every kind of activity that goes on in the school, from being a student to being a fantastic teacher, you know, to being a manager, and finally to having the vision to to bring Chelsea to Milburn. And I, I think that everybody I wasn't here at the time, but I certainly had a sense from my colleagues that everybody felt that he was on their side whatever part of the yeah, whole yeah. process you were he brought in. Them along and that, and that made a, it makes a huge difference it to does. the rank and file, you know, where I would count myself, but to know that there's somebody up there who knows how difficult it is to both teach and create and to do research. So that was that was the quality. May you halfway down.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm so pleased this is being recorded. I hope it's all being recorded. If I need another job, I know it. <laughs> well, um, if I can just ask Roger to prick the Roger Fest uh, balloon which seems to be going on at the moment. Um, in the dark, in your dark hours, when you look back on this, what, one regret, one mistake about the move which you, which you wish we could have done something differently? Yeah, there's, there's actually no talent. I mean, I, I, and I, I've, I've shared a lot of these with, with colleagues. I mean, I think that the one thing I, I really feel is that the, the timing of the sequence is a real problem. I mean, I... I the fact that I saw the plans before I'd heard the views of the staff was a real problem. You know, the first thing I saw when I arrived, um, I think it was soon after I had the staff interview, and the plans were pinned up around Manresa Road on that, on, that, on, on, on that wonderful space in there. And I, I saw the plans before I knew what the staff felt, and that was a real, that's a real problem, I think, for anybody who's trying to lead an institution. You can't lead it from paper. You can't lead it from a from a you know an elevation and a plan view. You've got to lead it from from the desires that re reside within the institution, and and, and therefore I, I would have backed way the process pre-plan to the point at which I could actually understand what what the thinking was, if there was thinking, and I'm not sure there was in in, in that process of going through. So one thing I regret is having to accelerate something which I really didn't want to, and I think. Oh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a brutal process, but it was certainly an accelerated process, by which, by which certainly Sally and I, as, as, my, as my chief collaborator, had to, had to say, we're going to have to make a decision about this one, we have to do this this way. And we knew at the time it was a, partial, it was a partially informed view, it wasn't a fully informed view. And you knew, therefore, you needed to, to, if to, to backfill it with more contingency than you would have done normally, Alan. I think that's the point. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's the, the timing was accelerated. And then, of course, the, the final thing was we moved in too fast for people. I mean, some of us have been here some time, but some people haven't. And, and the, the speed of, the speed of, of, of occupation was a, real, was a real problem. And I did, you did feel for, for, for course leaders who were facing students who knew the place probably slightly better than they did. You know, I, and so that, that was that was a real problem. So timing, timing was the thing. I think that's all that change. I don't think. Oh, so I, I just add one thing which, which I think goes with the practical questions. Was, was one of the things which helped us, if you like, was the fact that um, where Roger can manage change is its ability to um, team build. And I think it's uh, the ability to uh, spot. Um, uh, things about people that they may not spot themselves and, 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 and put them into those positions and then encourage them to move on with that. And, uh, you, and as Sally said, we became, we felt very, very much, we were very much part of this move. The college felt like that. And um, we didn't get asked a lot of questions which were then thrown away and not used. We were asked the right questions that, that were used. And our experience here, because obviously moving a college of this size is a rare occurrence in this country. I mean, it's a rare occurrence yeah. in the world. Um, and so our experience here has been, has been looked at under a microscope by many other colleges uh, who, who want to know how it was done, how it was done so successfully and what we got wrong. We have, I mean, we've thrown many colleges off the rails on, on their planning because they've come to us and didn't realise the way that we did it and they've decided that that's the way they should do it themselves. So we have, we have, we did build a road for a number of our design institutions which now have been travelled. I suppose I mean, in, 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 in respect, you, 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 you would see how much have you carved off the college now to put into that contract. I mean, you know, what, what compromises have you given along the way? What would you like to reclaim in that process? And in a sense, it would be up to Chelsea to do that. Chelsea could, could decide, for example, if it wanted to, to, re, to reintroduce a number of things that the, the time we felt we could dispense with and, and, and have been dispensed with over the years. But that's the point of moving. The point of moving is not to move and say we've done it. The point of moving is to say we've moved and from moving we've learned that we've not done it. That actually the question is still alive, we can still debate it and we can still share that view. And I hope that continues because I, I think as soon as it settles into the site, then, then in a sense the whole project has been lost. I think actually that kept us going through some pretty tough moments to be able to also not only 
see in some senses slightly absurdity of certain situations, but actually also ourselves trying to do certain things. But, but I, I think that we, I mean, that name we now, the way we operate here, we try to remember actually not to take ourselves too seriously, take it seriously, but take ourselves too seriously. Well, I, I, that was always advice. I was, I, was giving, I was giving very good advice. You asked me a question earlier on. And if I was going to pinpoint it, one bit of very good advice I had from a, from a previous boss of mine who said, said <clears throat> take everybody else seriously apart from yourself. Okay. And that was, I, I, I've always thought that was really good advice. So if, if there's a key to anything, it's probably that. Well, on behalf of us all, may I thank Professor Roger Thorson for that erudite and very human perspective of how to manage change successfully. And on your behalf, you have been the most fantastic audience. When Steve and I sat in this room six months ago, in my wildest dreams, I never expected so many people, so many interested people, so many smiling people. And I think we've come away with much, haven't we? Intellectually and spiritually today. And thank you. And now drinks will be served in the green room, which is the old smoking room, for those in the front room, front row. Um, and we can all chatter away together. Thank you very much indeed.